Good afternoon, my name is Jim Conlon and welcome to this episode of our entertainment show. As you know, in part three of our entertainment show, each week we premiere a TV series and movie that is debuting in Ireland and the UK for this upcoming month or so. And we're just going to talk about a hugely successful show that has been running in Ireland for the last month or two now. Uh, it's very much into its uh, third season. It's very prominent because it's probably one of the last uh, Star Trek uh, series we're going to see with the one and only uh, Patrick Stewart uh, in it who plays Jean-Luc Picard. It's called Star Trek, uh, Star Trek Picard. It's on channel Amazon Prime here in Ireland and the UK. It's going down to rave reviews and we're delighted to be joined by one of the stars of the Star Trek uh, universe dating back. She started off with uh, Patrick Stewart way back and back in the early sort of 90s uh, when Star Trek uh, came out about uh, the one and only Gates McFadden. If you recognise Gates, you probably say uh, Miss Crusher, Dr. Crusher. Yes, indeed, Dr. <laughs> Beverly uh, Crusher. And Star Trek Picard, delightfully, it has numerous uh, actors and actresses who have played prominent roles throughout the Star Trek universe in the past. Jerry Ryan is still there, seven of nine. We see uh, Brent Spiner making guest role appearances. We see the likes of um uh, we did see the likes of uh, Michael Michael Frakes as well, uh, making uh, guest uh, appearances. Ed Dorn as well. Uh, we've new Marina Serretis, and we've new stars in like Alison Peel, Michelle Hurd, and uh, even Doctor Beverly Crusher's uh, son, Ed, who's played Jack Crusher, who's played by the one and only Ed Spe Ed Spieliers. Um, first of all, Gates, can you tell me when? Uh, this told you right we're going to reinvent Star Trek we have a new project in the pipeline and you're just saying wow I was in that maybe 20, 20, 20 years ago uh, I did that I'm a bit maybe I'm a bit sceptical what's this going to be like what's the story how am I going to come out about that were you just like yes 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 give me give me give me or were you just like I got to think about that for a second before I commit well, I'm not really a yes, 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 gimme, gimme, gimme kind of gal, unless you're talking about cookies or something or biscuits. <laughs> but um, no, when Patrick did the first season, you know, a lot of this, the cast from the seasons one and two are no longer in season three. It's really the next gen and some other new characters who are there. It's almost its own movie, except it comes out of the first two seasons. Uh, Patrick himself had taken us all out to dinner and told us that he was going to do a series with Paramount and that in CBS. And he said, but you all are probably not going to be in it. And he said, I might, you might do some guest spots, you know, like mm. a guest spot here and there. And so I assumed that maybe, you know, maybe one of the seasons I'd get to be in an episode. That's what I figured. Uh, but Instead, I got approached by Terry Metalis, who is the executive producer on and writer, head writer of the, this season. He's the storyteller who has really put it all together. And he's he was a huge TNG fan and he wanted to have all of the next generation cast come back for a real send off and possibly continue on in a sort of legacy series where they would focus on different characters at different times. And I wasn't jumping up and down. I wanted to know what the story was because I had not had very much in the, in the films. And yes, it's lovely to get a paycheck, but it's even more lovely to really be proud of the work you've done in something because it has substance. So that's what I wanted. I wanted work that had substance and they gave it to me and I was thrilled and so grateful to, be, to have the opportunity to come back after so many years and we are acting together, but we've all evolved as human beings and the characters have evolved. So it was a rich, rich thing for me. And my character in particular got to, she was kind of a renegade in a way. She'd been out of Starfleet for a long time. So I had a great storyline. And I suppose Gates, in terms of that, coming back after so much time, do you think to yourself, right, this is a new character I'm playing. Uh, did it almost feel, you mentioned a new sort of storyline, a new sort of arc behind her. Did you sort of feel that, yeah, this had been reinvented so much that you could add an extra layer to her stories, that you could bring her in a sort of different direction than what she was? Did you almost feel like a new identity or new personality that came upon Dr. Beverly Crusher? Um, 
No, I felt that she had changed. She had evolved and she life had thrown certain circumstances her way. Uh, I don't know. Have you all seen it at, yet in Ireland? Have you? Yes, we, we've, oh, we, have. yes, we, okay. yes, yeah, we've some, as some of the episodes are out at the moment currently. So that, that you know that she has a, another son and, mm. um, and I believe that it was, it was really important that that got presented in the right way, that it wasn't just a selfish act on her part, but that it was actually an instinct she had that this child really needed protection. And that that was the key. And Patrick and I loved doing the scenes where there's conflict. Um, it, we had so much fun and we and it was it, it wasn't like an old character. It was like he, he, this is a person I've uh, I have a chemistry with. Sir Patrick and I work well together. And we did the scene that, that he had ideas that he, he changed some of the script because he felt it was not balanced correctly. So it got to me, got balanced more in favor of Picard's point of view. But, but I think once you see the whole series, I think he, people are very happy that uh, Dr. Crusher did what she chose to do. And I suppose Gates, in terms of the shooting and the production on set, and obviously, We've moved on in time now. We've moved 20 years into the future. All the special effects, all the graphic, all the sets, they've all sort of advanced. Did you almost feel that it kept true to its sort of word in terms of uh, the originality that made uh, Star Trek what it was there today? But obviously little sort of improvements sort of here and there, but nothing too much over the top? No, well, I think, I mean, the cinema, it's... The cinematography is just tremendous. The lenses, the way the sound is picked up now, the sound is so delicate. We used to have to um, really be careful when we shot the first seasons of Next Generation back in the 90s and late 80s. We really had to be careful. Every little pencil drop, you know, we'd have to reshoot. Um, but now it's so delicate, it just can pick up your voice and it doesn't bother you all of the other sounds around. It's really wonderful, the, the technology that they're using. But I think also Patrick had the idea, he wanted the world of his show to be a darker world, but still true to, this, to the original Roddenberry uh, premises of collaboration, tolerance, and working together for the greater good. That is still there. But there are more conflicts within the crew and that's what's really interesting. So you see, we can disagree about something, but we still come together. We don't st um, stop and, and just be in this bad place. We still can work together. If there's a problem, we immediately go towards solving the problem. And that to me was something very key about Roddenberry's vision. It's that you're, you're a team and the future is positive because we're all ultimately on the same side and we all ultimately do forgive each other. And that's important. We need more of that in the world, I think. And I suppose, Gates, uh, in terms of your role now in uh, Star Trek Picard, and you were delighted to get an advanced role, but when you saw some of your friends and colleagues come back and guest appear in sort of roles as well, and I know some of them you've probably seen an awful lot down through years, but some of them you probably has been a bit of time and uh, obviously was there a bit of surprise when so a familiar face walked in the door for a guest sort of episode in terms of that well, uh, well yes there was for one person but i ended up not having scenes with her so i didn't see her but for the regular next gen cast that was there for most of the seasons we see each other all these, all the time we have a group text we're we're in touch and we also whenever we do our conventions or public appearances we're, we're often together and that's the lovely gift of it. And also, you know, I've been doing this podcast, uh, Gates McFadden Investigates, Who Do You Think You Are?, which is available on all, Amazon and all these different, uh, Spotify, wherever, all the platforms. But I've now had the chance to really have in-depth discussions with people from other shows like uh, DS9 or even Enterprise. Uh, um, and Kate Mulgrew was on and we had an incredible episode <laughs> and we're both Irish and that was fun. We talked, we talked about Catholicism a bit. Um, so I'm, I love all of the people, Tim Russ, I, I, am, I respect him very much. He's so, um, politically active and wonderful actor. 
so yeah, I feel we, we really, all of us have been cast well, all these different executives cast us well because they're quite interesting people and they do care about the world and care about the future. And you feel that, I think, when, when we're working together. There's a very positive, loving vibe, even if we're arguing with each, with the characters are arguing. <laughs> and Gates, were you excited to see your script each week for our Star Trek Picard in terms of what might be involved in, uh, in terms of your character storyline? Did it bring back that sort of giddyish excitement for 20 years ago uh, in terms of uh, trying to see what did the writers, producers have around the next in corner? Or when you signed on to the projects, did he give you that sort of feeling out when maybe what's in store for her long term in, in terms of Picard? Or was it very much a, a episode by episode and you're just trying to wait and see uh, what's no. in store for your character? No, no, I knew the arc of my character. We had discussed yeah. it. One of the greatest differences is, remember, we did 26 episodes a season. So we would do episodes in seven or eight days. Now we take longer and we usually film two episodes simultaneously because that way we can shoot everything that's in a sick bay on the same couple of days and everything that's on the bridge in the same few days. So it's a different schedule, but they I always had my scripts much more in advance. We often did not have our scripts in advance for the original. Sometimes we literally, <laughs> I remember one time I was seeing the script for the first time and I was just coming out of hair and makeup and I had no idea what, what it was about. So that's, that wasn't always true, obviously, but seriously, nobody nowadays, nobody does 26 episodes. It's, it's a, a tribute to those producers that they could uh, do that back then because now most series are sometimes six, 10, maybe 12, 13, but not much more. And in terms of that relationship, obviously, with Patrick, and it's, it's a great relationship Do you have, but when you were around him, did you feel his sense of excitement, his sense, sense of freshness every time that he went on to set? Or obviously, as he gets older, it probably has it as, uh, affected him in terms of as, as the seasons, in terms of multiple episodes, in terms of that. But you, do you feel that a bit of freshness, or do you feel maybe towards after the towards on third season star trek picard that uh, there's a bit of tiredness of fatigue because obviously the demands of acting and demands of acting as you get older being a season regular regular is more and more intense i think patrick did incredible work it's some of his best work he did so i think you can judge for yourself what you think he was feeling to uh have committed to the scenes the way he did i think there's a huge range of um the character uh, that I hadn't always seen. And it was terrific. I also think you have to, uh, Patrick, uh, if he was more tired, and he probably was, remember he had just shot season two and with no break went straight into season three. We had not been doing season two. So for us, it was, you know, there like John Delancey had been in season two and I think Brent was in, Brent was more in season one. Um, I can't remember if he was in season two or not. Anyway, so for us, it was different. And um, I, th I, think, I think he does astonishing work. And I suppose, uh, Gates, I know it's a busy time for you in terms of other projects. You, you do voiceover. Before we came on air, you mentioned about voiceover and video games. You mentioned about your voiceover work. You mentioned about your podcast as well. You might enlighten all our viewers and listeners about what's going on in the world of Gates and McFadden in 2023 and uh, other projects. And uh, obviously, you mentioned your podcast, but what, what else is in the world or what's in store for Gates McFadden? Uh, well, boy, you tell me. I, it's been a very wonderful year. I've uh, worked on an animation by Kevin Smith. I've worked on, um, which was uh, so much fun. And then I, I've been, uh, I've done several video games. I also put in an appearance on Prodigy. Um, uh, and I did a series with Nacelle Productions and they also, Nacelle Cast has produced my podcast. They asked me to do a podcast actually. Um, which I turned them down a couple of times because I thought, why would you ask me to do a podcast? But you know, it's been really fun and I've learned how to sound edit. I do the editing myself, but Nacell, I met them when they asked me if I would um, co-produce with them 
but basically also do a lot of the, the I did the vocal narration for a project that goes through all of the history of Star Trek um, up through Enterprise. And it's pretty astonishing, I have to say. I learned so much about Gene Roddenberry and the writers and the, where the arguments were over the movies, things I had never heard of even, um, plus some of the gossip I had heard of. But it was fascinating. Uh, even they gave us much more detail about how it was Lucille Ball and Desilu Productions, not Desilu, her husband, but it was really um, Desi uh, Arnaz, right, it, sorry not Desi Lewis, both of their companies. But she was amazing. And if it hadn't been for her, Star Trek never would have happened. And she allowed the redoing of the pilot. She was seminal in this whole franchise. Uh, she gave birth to it with Roddenberry because if you don't have someone producing it, you're not doing the series. At any rate, it's called The Center Seat. And it's a beautiful program. And I hope that you get it over there. It was on the History Channel here for two years. And now they're selling the DVDs. Uh, it, but there's it's many episodes and it's quite fabulous so i highly recommend it's like about nine episodes um Good. i highly recommend that as well and of and course I have, a, I have a remodel going on in my house and i hope all of you understand that there's booms happening as we're speaking and i'm in my one little room that i i, I make it look presentable for all of my zooms mm -hmm. but it's not so presentable on this side over here which i'm glad you're not seeing <laughs> And Gates, I do believe you visit Emerald Island a few times. You've been in Dublin, you've been in the East Coast, you've been to the, the Wicklow Mountains there, I say. But the West Coast is a burning ambition for Gates McFadden. And I do believe a bit of Irish heritage there, I say, as well. Oh, absolutely. I come from a line of uh, Irish and also Scotch-Irish. Um, and my mother's side was Lithuanian, but my father, was, my Alice Carey was my grandmother, Alice Carey Mann. And, um, it was my father was my grandfather was James McFadden. Um, I love Ireland. I've I love Irish literature. Um, I have loved all the Irish actors I know. It's a fantastic country. And uh, actually, I, I one thing that I did that might be of interest. Um, the Bell of Belfast was a play that I produced at the theater I built in Los Angeles. I built a theater for. Uh, plays, 100 seat theater, 200 seat theaters, and then two smaller theaters. So it's a four theater space. I sold my Star Trek memorabilia to have the money to build this. And um, so if you ever went online and bought some, thank you for helping us build our theater. And we only did new plays and um, it was exciting. It was a beautiful, um, beautiful play. And I want to get back there. You know, I, I went, um, with a friend of mine, Loudon Wainwright III, I went to Bell um, uh, to Dublin uh, and had a great time there. I uh, loved the pubs. I, I've always loved my Guinness. Um, and then I got to see a little bit of County Wicklow, but not nearly enough. I went up to that place I told you about, Sally's Gap, which was one of the most beautiful places I've ever been on earth. Um, I hear it might be changed now because some, the Guinnesses were going to build something down somewhere because it was so beautiful. But when I drove up, it was just, I mean, the road was like this big. The car was outside of the road and it was just, we got up to the middle. I took my mother and there was a crossroads and there was just a single sheep standing there. And this was like the tip of the world is what it seemed like. It was on top of the cliffs, the moors. And I just remember, I, it's in my mind forever. So beautiful. What a beautiful country. On that note, uh, Gates McFadden, for the final 30 seconds, we might turn it over to you. And you might like, lighten all our viewers, all our listeners, why they should tune in if they aren't tuning in, in already to Star Trek Picard, to see you relive your role as Dr. Beverly Crusher and to see Jan Luke Picard and uh, Patrick Stewart uh, do his thing. And uh, what's in store for them, Gates McFadden? you will have such an adventure such a ride and it will you won't get ahead of it unless you've been cheating and reading what other people have written it's really a thrilling wonderful ride and um if you loved tng you're gonna really love this i think so i hope you enjoy it on that note gates mcfadden from me jim conlon to you gates mcfadden uh, stay safe take care 
enjoy the remodeling. I do put the ear ear muffs in and you know, and to, to block off the noise and you know, and uh, if it's if it looks if your house turns out as as good as your Zoom backgrounds there, uh, no doubt it'll be a, a a wonderful sort of house renovation. But for the moment, for me, Jim Conlon, to you, Gates McFadden, stay safe, take care, and God bless. Thank you very much, Jim. Bye bye. Bye, Gates.